for coming. So I uh, want to address a couple of things that we didn't address in the last video. The last video was really lower body issues, the lower back predominantly. And I know that sometimes that's not the only thing that happens with activities such as snow shuffling. We can have elbow issues, wrist issues, shoulder issues. And oftentimes they really do originate in the shoulders. So we will take a look at that and how our Anusara Yoga principles can really help us create the better alignment here so that possibly we'll have less issues in the elbow or wrist. Just a, a thing that I want to show you, if you do have elbow issues, which could be tendonitis because the thinner, weaker muscles are overstretching and then getting inflamed, you can use something simple like an ACE bandage and snugly wrap your arm, which creates the same action that we are trying for in muscular energy in our yoga practice. Other things that work are these neoprene sleeves that are adjustable, have Velcro closing, and even something small and simple like this band, uh, which has a little gel pack that you can freeze and then get the added benefit of the cold, which can help with inflammation. Uh, that happens with something like tendonitis. So those are really wonderful things that you can do in addition to creating the proper actions and alignment. So with the uh, shoulders, we want to really integrate arms into shoulders and we really want to create the, the same kind of hugging action and uh, integrity in the arm muscles so that we're not overextending or straining the thinner, weaker parts. So we can look at a pose like extended child pose and do it in a very um, focused way to create this right alignment and the right action. So coming to all fours, knees about hip width, we're going to have our hands on the floor, and you can decide whether it works for you to turn your toes under or point your toes back, but either way, we're taking the hips back toward the heels. Now, if that doesn't work for you because it creates knee discomfort, instead, keep your knees right under your hips and walk your hands forward. The idea is we want to really engage the arm muscles and connect the arms and shoulders. So whether uh, our toes are turned under or pointed back, whether um, our hips are back behind the knees or over the knees, we want to extend the arms and then we're going to press the fingertips down into the floor and as though you wanted to pull your hands back toward you, it's an isometric action so you're not actually moving the hands, but you're isometrically pulling them back, and you'll really feel the arm muscles engage. You'll feel the underside of the arm lifting, and all the muscles hugging in. If we weren't doing that, things would probably be overextending and straining. So here we are pressing down, and not only are we feeling the arm muscles engage, we can even, as we isometrically draw the hands back, connect the arms and shoulders more fully. We'll even feel muscles working around the shoulder girdle and uh, we'll feel the shoulder blades being drawn onto the back. So that's really helping us with our alignment and creating balanced action, creating the, the nice connection of the muscles hugging in. So I'm going to show you uh, from this position also, and if we had our arms out in front, we call this sleepwalking arms in Anusara Yoga, and what might happen is we'd reach out. So I'm going to show you one side reaching out, and then the other side connecting in first, and then extending out. So you can probably see my right hand is closer to you. I'm just pulling the arm out of the shoulder. And then if you're doing activities where you're doing repetitive motion and adding weight, these muscles will get strained. And it's going to be even more pronounced when you're adding weight. So first we connect in, and then we extend out. So 
um, just something to think about. We can do it here. We call this How Wonderful. The drawing from the hands back to the shoulders. And when I open my fingers up, I also engage more muscles. So everything's much more interconnected. So, so those are some of the things to keep in mind for the arms and shoulders. And also quickly, I'll just show you sometimes even around the house, what you can do is you can take a belt, it could be a, any kind of belt that's long, long enough that you can make a little loop with it, and then put it over one shoulder, so it's like you're putting your arm into a coat sleeve, and then you're bringing the other arm back into a coat sleeve as well. And then once you have this belt around your shoulders, you're going to snug it up just so that you can't round your shoulders because that's the arms disconnecting from the shoulders. So this creates a really nice alignment and oftentimes we have elbow issues, wrist issues from disconnecting and having all of the weight and energy going downward and this helps us bring the energy back to the stronger part of the body where the muscles are stronger and more supportive. So if we have wrist issues, this is really nice. And even things like with computer work or any kind of uh, work we do repetitively with the arms out in front, this keeps everything really balanced. So I also mentioned that I wanted to just address the knee uh, area, which can come up from different activities. And what happens sometimes is just like with the um, arms and shoulders, we lose our alignment. And I can be a professional hyperextender with the knee and overstretch uh, the back of the knee and strain it. And also my leg naturally tends to go out. I don't have a lot of stability in the muscles there. So I have to create it. And one way is to uh, bring the feet Parallel, so the center of the ankles are straight ahead. Spread and open the toes. And then I start to engage the leg muscles. The calves are drawing up. The front of the thighs are drawing up. All the muscles are actively connecting. When the little toes spread, that helps reconnect the legs to the center line of the body, so they draw in. These outer shin muscles, called the peroneals, are connected to the little toes, so they become active. That presses the lower legs in. Once the lower legs are pressing in, you'll feel the inner thighs pressing out. So we have this, all, this constant balancing of opposite actions. We could also bend the knees, still actively open the toes, and we can even manually press in with the hands on the lower legs below the knees, yet resist, keeping the adductors strong, keeping the knees parallel. So it's a therapeutic thing we can do, but we can be mindful when we're doing uh, different activities to keep the feet more forward and keep the knees parallel to each other. Another therapeutic thing that you could do is from a seated position, have your uh, knee bent, heel on the floor, and having the toes straight up, you can actively open the toes. You're gonna use your hands, the one hand on the lower leg, the outer lower leg below the knee, the other hand on the upper leg above the knee. And then the hands pressing in and the leg moving forward and back can help relieve any inflammation that you have in the knee because you're clearing the knee by lining up the leg bones and then the movement helps to clear the inflammation. So those are a few therapeutic things you can do. And um, so I hope this is all really helpful to you, and um, I'm happy to share. So you take care. Happy snow shoveling. Enjoy the beautiful winter.